here with Ron Bloom, Vice Chairman of U.S. Investment Banking at Lazard. Ron had a pivotal role in the restructuring of Detroit and Detroit bankruptcy. Ron, tell us a little bit about what Lazard did in his role in, in the Detroit situation. Uh, Lazard was engaged by a, a court-appointed retiree committee. So the court had set up uh, a committee to represent the interests of all the people who used to work for Detroit and were owed either pensions or health care benefits. And what kinds of uh, challenges did you face in, in, uh, in the work there? Well, the most fundamental challenge we faced was the level of the, the size of the problem. I mean, Detroit had spent a long time getting itself into trouble, and by the time the bankruptcy was actually filed, uh, the level of obligation that they'd taken on beyond their ability to pay was just very, very large. And the kinds of, working out the solutions, tell us a little bit about that process. Well, this, the, the main solution creation was done during what was called the mediation process, which is that the judge had appointed a number of people, Judge Rosen, Gene Dreiker, others, to kind of try to facilitate broad conversations between the city as representing the, the city and the key stakeholders. And obviously the retirees were by far the largest creditor. The retirees were about 80 to 85 percent of all the unsecured claims in the entire city. So a lot of the dialogue was between us and the city. And do you think the mediation was the proper approach to take in this? Uh, I think it was, yeah, I mean, it's always easy because it worked. So, you, you, you know, victory has a lot of fathers. Um, but I do think it is because one of the things that I observed, and I've done a lot of Chapter 11s over my career. This is actually my first Chapter 9. Um, and what you realize in a Chapter 9, a bit different than a Chapter 11, is the tremendous complexity and the political overlay of what you're doing. Um, be because you don't have the same, in some ways, simple rules that you have with a corporation, where you know it sells a product and people want to pay for the product, they pay a certain amount. If they won't pay, you know the company can't sell its product. What is the product of a city, and and what can you charge for it? Those are much less precise questions. So the necessity for a multivariate, if you will, analysis and a multidimensional approach to the problem is is absolutely clear. And I think that's hard to do you know, kind of an open court. Um, so I think the fact that there could be confidential, off-the-record discussions that involved moving a lot of pieces all at once, which is what it was, which was what was required to put this deal together, I think it was a good venue for it. And what do you think the lessons are for other troubled municipalities? What have you come away with from it? Well, I think it goes back to, to what I started to say before, which is that uh, the, these are political subdivisions. The, these are political entities. And so, the, the real test for both reorganizing and candidly going forward to Detroit is whether people can come together with a political uh, approach that says we're all going to try to act responsibly and thoughtfully and, and try to make this city a better place for all of us. And, and that's a hard thing to do. And, you know, Churchill famously said about democracy, you know, but, but that's our system and I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, but it was that system that got Detroit into trouble. And now, and, and I think the, the lesson of the 11, of the 9, sorry, is that people were able to come together around a solution that had a bunch of discomfort for a lot of people. But they really were able to ask themselves, what's right for Detroit? And what do we do so that this city can live again? And I think if you look to the future of Detroit, that's the question is now they've been given a, a bit of a second start, a bit of a second chance. Can the political system provide the kind of leadership uh, so that Detroit can move forward again? And for other cities, that you need that kind of... That, that's what I would say is the lesson is that you can't simply look to the, to the balance sheet or to the income statement, if you will. Obviously, you have to look at that, but you really got to ask yourself, do people have the political will to make difficult choices and, 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 and treat, but, but ask themselves, what are we all going to do so that this city and the citizens, the 700,000 human beings who live in Detroit, can have a chance at a fair life? Terrific. Ron, thank you so much for your you're insights. Ver you're very welcome. Thank you.